Hello and welcome to the show. My name's Relevant. This is Do All of the Things. On today's episode, I'm gonna build an external power supply for EMG pickups. For the circumstances in which you cannot fit a battery or enough batteries inside the instrument itself. Let's tear into it. So in another episode that I might uh, post after this one, I have a Squire Jazz Bass, sorry, no, a Squire P Bass that I put EMG pickups into, but there wasn't enough room to fit a battery and I didn't want to route it out yet. Now I had been thinking about this, uh, I was mentally prepared for it, and one night I scratched down this schematic on a piece of paper. So what is this schematic? It is the schematic for a power supply. Uh, minus the disconnect. Here, let me correct on this real quick. There, you're gonna kind of do the thing that they do in EMG pickups normally. So that's going to be the out jack. You plug into there, the sleeve and the ring short out to connect the nine volt battery to the ground bus. And so what we have here is we have our nine volt battery and then we have this resistor LED network and then we have a capacitor and then we have a mode switch and then we have an output or sorry, the input where the ring terminal is going to supply positive power to the instrument. Now you are gonna have to use a stereo TRS type cable to do this. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I could design a power supply that doesn't need a TRS. It can transfer power just through a normal patch cord. But this particular design, if you have the TRS, is gonna add certain bonuses to us. So it's a good thing. Now one bonus of this design is it's designed to work with normal instruments. So if you take that same TRS and you plug it into a normal base that doesn't have an EMG, it's gonna basically ignore the positive signal and it's gonna work normally. So you could use it on any instrument. You don't have to remove the power supply. This mode switch is basically going to change this output here from the positive connection to just another ground connection. And then you can plug a normal patch cord into the power supply itself and not short anything out. That would be different if I designed the power supply to use a regular patch cord because it would be putting power into, you know, the, the, the signal line, which might not cooperate with other guitars. Another extra added hidden bonus has to do with the wiring of a, a guitar that already has has EMGs in it. If we grossly generalize existing EMG wiring, there's our output jack, the negative of the nine volts connected to that ring terminal so that we insert our jack, it shorts out against the ground, powering negative power to the pickup itself. And then positive goes directly to positive and we have our signal here. So what happens when we plug this into this? Well, we've got negative from this battery on that ring terminal. Through the TRS cable, that negative will connect to the positive of this battery supply. And when you put two batteries in series like that, you're gonna go from nine volts to 18 volts. So this power supply can serve double duty with instruments that already have a nine volt in them to boost them up to an 18 volt system. Oh, because 18 volt systems are fun sometimes. They uh, change the headroom of the preamp in the pickup because those pickups, they use op amps to do their preamplification and op amps are often rated for up to 30 volts. Now don't quote me on that because they are different, but they typically will do 18 volts, no problem. EMG even tells you in their documentation, you have the option of doubling up the battery. But hey, you know, sometimes it's hard enough fitting one battery into the guitar, fitting two is just not happening happening, this is going to allow us to do that. To top it all off, the mode switch again, because it switches between the positive source and the ground, when we switch it to ground, it's just going to ground out the guitar situation the same way as if we install, uh, just plugged in the jack. So we'll go back to 19 volts. So by flicking the mode switch, we could toggle between an 18 volt and a nine volt system to see if we can actually hear the difference. Now you're looking at this, you're probably like, well, what's all this about? That is a short circuit protection circuit. If you plug a normal patch cord into this, well, obviously you're gonna short out the positive to the ground, you're gonna have a short circuit. That's gonna, you know, heat up your battery. Fortunately, nine volts aren't high output enough that you're gonna really melt anything. It's just, it's not gonna be fun. It's gonna kill the battery very fast. By putting a 1K resistor in line here, we prevent that from happening. Now the rating of EMG pickups is typically about 80 microamps. I don't know about other pickups. I don't know about their X series, but their normal pickups, 80 microamps. That is not a lot of power. Resistors resist current proportionally to the current draw. At 80 microamps, we will see a voltage drop of just 0 
0.08 volts, if I recall correctly. I need to double check my math. I'm not used to working with microamps, so I have to like Google it. Yeah, that's 0.0048. So 1000 K I, no V over I A. So 0.12348 times 1000 K resistors. Yes, yeah, 0.08 volts, which as far as the pickup is concerned is transparent. That's just the difference between a fresh battery and a battery that's been used a couple hours and a battery that lasts years. So we're gonna see no voltage drop here until we accidentally short circuit it. A direct short circuit is going to consume nine milliamps per volt through a, 10, a 1K resistor. So that means as soon as we short circuit this, this resistor starts actually resisting and we're gonna, the nine volt battery is gonna see a nine milliamp load, which isn't enough to damage it, isn't enough to drain it really fast. Like you're still gonna get over 10 hours, you can forget the pedal in this mode and you're gonna be fine. And then yeah, it just prevents short circuit, which brings us to this LED with another 1K resistor. Well, when only 80 microamps is being drained from this circuit, that LED is not gonna do anything, but once we directly short circuit this, that LED is gonna see both positive and negative and it's gonna light up. So we're gonna have a little light that comes on that tells us if we're having a short circuit fault. So that's the design of this guy. Maybe I should uh, draw this up nicer and post it up here so you can see it better, but that's what we're doing today. So where's my box that I'm gonna use, bud? Now, if I find myself generally enjoying this proof of concept, I will go ahead and install it into a proper 1590 enclosure and I will come up with a design around that. In the meantime, I'm gonna be using this old weird enclosure that I have. This was like some random fuzz pedal like a buddy had and they gave it to me and well, at the time I didn't like fuzz pedals so I gutted it to use it as a project enclosure. And uh, yeah, I've since lost that circuit so it's not going back. Right now I'm using it as a basic AB pass-through switch for uh, switching cabs actually. This is 14 gauge wire in here. But we're gonna keep this. This is gonna be our mode switch and we gotta replace all these jacks with the appropriate kinds that we need. Now of course, we can just go ahead and put two batteries into this box and then have ourselves a power supply that can run an instrument at 18 volts but then switch to nine volts. Just be careful. Rumor has it that we can run some of these pickups at more than 18 volts. I do believe there are people out there doing 27 volt mods. And again, a lot of op amps that they, they would use to build these are rated for up to 30. But uh, I, I, I don't think you should just willy nilly jack 27 volts into any device that you have without, you know, maybe looking up online to find out if someone else has done it first. All right, so this old crap's out. I gotta get the new crap in there that hopefully fits. Oh, of course not, bud. Oh, of course not, bud. We're gonna have to widen one of these holes. I wanna put them on this outside here. Oh, that's okay. If I just uh, have at it with this particular tool, I should be able to make quick work of one of these. Actually, it's gonna need well more than this tool can do. And those are supposed to be potentiometer holes. We're cursing this box now, bud. Seven sixteenths. I think this tiny drill has enough chooch to finish this off. Barely. It got it done. It's gonna need a charge now, though. That should be the only fabrication we need to do this. Everything else should drop fit in there. So we got ourselves a TRS jack that says made in Japan here. That's sweet. So basically we need two TRS jacks, right? One of them has to actually uh, communicate TRS. Just occurred to me, this design, you might be able to daisy chain these together to actually get the 18 volts. <laughs> okay. So as usual, what I usually do, one of the jacks is insulated, the other jack is hard bound. The idea is this bug closure needs to be uh, grounded, right? So that gets grounded through the uh, output jack that goes to the amp, so it connects to the amp ground. And then this guy gets insulated so that we don't have have a ground loop. Sometimes when people buy build pedals, they let the ground pass through the enclosure itself. I think that's a bad connection. If we want to maintain signal integrity, we want to use direct connections here and then just isolate this so we don't get a loop. Gonna grab myself high quality wire of various colors. Since this enclosure is grounded, we are not too terribly concerned with using shielded wire, even though we can to improve things. Now, right now I'm thinking I'm gonna be all point to point, but I have to consider how I'm gonna tie down some of these connections. There are these like little thingers here that will take screws. Probably just stick a nice terminal in here. We'll need two 1K resistors, some form of LED, and a capacitor capable of bearing the load. Because yeah, we don't want to just drop the voltage here. We want to buffer it with a capacitor afterwards. For something like this, like a 1U. Trying to turn a random schematic into a point to point. Okay, I'm starting to get ideas now. 
One terminal on the switch will connect directly to ground, and the other is gonna to connect to the power supply output, which means we can just kind of take our capacitor, bridge it across the switch here, and it will get where it needs to go. Nothing else needs to connect to ground, it seems, other than the switch itself. So I'm gonna start building a ground bus with this wire. I'm gonna to wanna to mid strip it there. And then that has to go to the switch. Single piece of wire with a mid strip on it. Put that through the jack's ground hole, but backwards the other way around. Give it a twist, tack it on there. Sorry if this is not the best angle for you. Hey, why isn't solder sticking to this uh, lug? This is a Japanese jack, it should be better than this. I do not like this jack already. Whatever, it's fine. Get this on the ground lug of the guitar side. Tack it on, and then finally get this ground bus to the mode switch, and also the capacitor, and tack that on. All right, what's next? I need some sort of assembly by which to uh, have an LED. I have some grommets du fromage, which might help the situation. If anything, they will fill in these holes so they don't look so ugly. Possible in one of these grommets, I might be able to jam an LED holder. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, that'll do. It's a bit close to the jack here, which it doesn't need to be, so let's put it into the other spot. It's nice, the subtle spread on the thing here kind of grips it in. You know what I don't like, though? We don't have anything to connect to. I'm gonna try a different approach here. Seen here, I have a damaged potentiometer. I don't like that idea already. Oh yeah, this jack's f***ed, bud. I've dug through parts, found something resembling an old worn out looking jack. We're just gonna cut that part off of it. With enough fuss, we got that mounted on there. Just gotta get rid of these old wires. Oh yeah, I use Ross compliance saw, or this whenever I wired that up. That was, that was the dark age. God, I put this on there too good. And I just realized I can't do that because it's gonna ground to the chassis. Well, that's a wonderful waste of time. All right, I've soldered this terminal strip on one of the lugs of the mode switch in which this particular connection goes to the ring lug of the input jack. Good thing this is just passing power. Oh, but isn't that cute? Now, lucky for us, which terminal is it? That one, the tip terminal, just connects directly to the tip terminal here just to pass signal through. So one great thing about this design is these two jacks connect directly together. So we don't have to worry about any of our wiring here affecting our signal integrity. All right, so now we just have to finalize this situation. So this is going to be our 9 volt positive terminal here, which is going to connect through jumper from there to the lug. I'm using the other elongation of this 1k resistor to reach the LED and I just have to connect another resistor here and get it over there. It's going to look sloppy bud, but it's going to be fun. Tack both these resistors onto the mode switch with the capacitor. It's occurred to me that capacitor is going to get away in the way of the battery terminal or the battery holder. Unless maybe we fold it down like that, then... Oh yeah, it clears now. Should clear. Let's put an actual battery in here. Be mindful that that sticks out. I should have put it another way. I just have to get a battery on here. How about one of these 81-6? Uh, I'd prefer an 81-8. That's an 8-inch. Do I have any 8-inch left? Ah! Here is an OG EMG one from the archives at OG EMG battery clip. Just get in there, bud. There, all right. That clip's in place. Give us a bit of height on this resistor. Let's tack those connections on there. That's basically it, right? Yep. The negative wire just has to go up here to our ring terminal to turn it on when we plug something in. All right, should be complete. If we connect our battery, nothing should happen. If we plug this in and it's in the wrong mode, Oh, well, it's it's not working already. That's wonderful. Oh, it's because it's not turned on. Now it's turned on. Now let's plug in a dummy jack. Yeah, our protect light. So now we grab ourselves a nice TRS patch cord. You guys see, it also kind of protects against, you know, insertion shorts. We grab a reasonably drawn facsimile of a multimeter. And if we go to our TRS cable, ground and ring, we're getting our 9.4 volts, 9.3. Unplug it, it should turn off, yes. Plug it in, it should turn on, yes. Should be nothing there, key term should, yeah. Now what's our voltage pre? 9.44, 9.44, you see it doesn't change. Now if we plug it into the actual instrument, we should be able to see different results here. So let's grab a ground terminal, test on the ring, 9.33, and on the input, 9.42. That's a drop of 0 0.09 volts, so pretty much on target. That means we're consuming a little bit more. If we uh, divide that by the thousand resistor, 90 microamps so we're off by 10 microamps so boom circuit is working as intended 
blow that out a bit. Drop the debris, start to close the door. We can slip the battery into place and just shut her up. Now we test on it. All right, this is our output to our amplifier. This is the instrument in question. And if you're tuning in now, wait, that doesn't make any sense. We're gonna finally test on this. Ah, it works. Ignore the hum, that's the amp. Amp's also quite tinny. If I flick this switch, it turns off. Oh, nice pop when we uh, chicka chicka. You know, maybe turning it off might be a good idea before we unplug. Try a normal bass guitar that is not active. Wow, you really hear the difference in output between the pickups, bud. Or wait, we're comparing P to P. There we go. And if I turn the power on, it shouldn't do anything. use this normally. Oh, the clincher. This jazz bass has active pickups already. So in short mode, they should work normally. And in theory now, if we punch it, oh, loud, but it should be in 18 volts now. I can't hear a difference in this scenario. Oh, I got the protect light. <laughs> That's wonderful. The protection circuit's doing what it's supposed to. We can try some guitar real quick. This is supposed to work on 18 volts. That light means it's in turned on. So it's got uh, uh, an EMG 60 in the bridge. Oh, it does sound different. I'm gonna have to play with this more, but she's done, there you have it. EMG power supply, proof of concept. I'm gonna play with this a little bit. If I like it, at some point I might officiate the design in a, in a little enclosure like this, or sometimes I'm just happy with the random thing that I throw together, and then I don't have to officiate it. There's a possibility I might not build a better version of this and just uh, enjoy on this one. Maybe I should put a little green LED here to tell me when I have the mode turned on, but then that's a battery drainer, right? Don't necessarily like that. We'll see. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did stay tuned because I like doing weird stuff like this sometimes, uh, and I have some guitar wiring projects coming up the pipe. So yeah. Now I have to finish filming the other half of the other video. Now that I have power for that bass. So let's do just that.